Hey, this is Tyler Survivalpedia. We're going to talk a little bit about hatchet selection, what to look for in a hatchet, um, weight, steel types, that kind of thing. So stick with me. Um, I grabbed the two hatchets that I have in my truck. This is uh, Grand Force Brook. I'm always going to slaughter that name. It is what it is. And it's one of my favorite hatchets. That's why it's sitting in the back of my truck. Um, first off, hatchets come in all sorts of steel types and sizes and differences in the same way that um, uh, knives come, right? So there's, there's a lot of options, a lot of different things that you can choose from. Um, when it comes to a really flat blade, I don't like those as much. They're more for planing and stuff. I like them to have a little bit of a an arc. I let a student use this one and I've got, it's it hit a rock right there, which makes me very sad and unhappy. But when it comes to hatchet selection, really what you should look at is the top of it right there, okay? So what this is gonna tell you is that there's gonna be a thin, deep penetration to about here and then it's gonna get wide. And this is great for a hatchet that you would use to create something with, like make the hearth board of a bow drill or making shingles or something. This is not great for a splitter because if you're using this to split wood, maybe you felled a tree or something, you're gonna have this long thin part penetrate and then stick and it's a little bit harder to get out. Now, I don't use hatchets to split wood a lot because of the location I'm at. The majority of type of the wood type that I've got is this stuff I'm sitting on right here where I'm usually making things over processing firewood. I'm not saying this won't split firewood, clearly it will. Um, in the area of the world that this hatchet was designed for, a lot of the wood's more crunchy. So it's not gonna sink and get stuck once you pop the blade in there, it's gonna blast apart. And the wood types change from altitude because of how cold it is and from uh, species, like what, ty what, what types of woods have different attributes. This juniper I'm sitting on right now, it's dense like a hardwood and it's twisted, right? So you're not gonna chase the grain so well with this, you'll end up cutting across the grain. Maybe if you're cutting quaking aspen at a little higher altitude up here, it's a little more crunchy. You can find soft uh, quaking aspen that is good for carving, quick growth, a lot of water in it. And you can find the harder, denser, dead stuff that if you do pop it, it's gonna blast apart as opposed to sink and stick. If you're using this on the pine trees around here, it'll sink and stick. and so that's why I say it's not great as a splitter, but it's phenomenal as a creation device. The majority of the time I am using this hatchet specifically to create things. So I'll be choking high on it. You can, a quick note while I'm thinking about this, you can do everything with a hatchet that you can do with a knife. Having said that, there are some things that a hatchet is better suited for. You can do everything with a knife that you can do with a hatchet. Clearly, a knife doesn't chop a tree as well, even though it's something that you can do. Steel types. Overall, hatchets will have different zones with different densities. So they're gonna have a softer section and a harder section. If they have a hardened pole, this one doesn't, but if they have a hardened pole, they'll have a, a beaten dense hard back on it so that you can use it like an, uh, a hammer or something and then they'll have a hardened tip on the front so when it comes to hatchets the reasons they have softer steel is because softer steel can take more abuse and it's more yielding so maybe you've got a, a 58 uh, on the scale of softness on a hatchet and like a 60 something on the scale of hardness for a knife. And the reason that is, is because I'm not gonna use this knife right here to chop into things. So I want it to be harder and therefore sharper, but then it's gonna be more brittle. And when it comes to a hatchet, 
I don't want it to be brittle. I want it to be able to take hard impacts. And the only way that I'm gonna do that is to lower its hardness on the hardness scale so that this is a little more like clay and a little less uh, brittle when it comes to the blade. So overall, you're always gonna have a softer steel in an ax head or a hatchet head than you are in a knife with the exception of this part right up here. They can get up to harder uh, amounts of, um, of hardness so that it can retain an edge. If you get too soft of a hatchet, you sharpen it, it cuts good for a tree or two, you gotta sharpen it again. And if you get too hard of a hatchet, then you start getting chips that pop out of the tip and you start rolling blades and, and that's the problem. So let me talk about the other hatchet I've got right here with me. This is a Keltoff hatchet. Um, this is more of a processing or carving hatchet. And again, the reason that I have these two specifically primarily is to make things. I make traps with them. I make uh, bow drill kits with them. I make hand drill kits with them. I make stuff fast, maybe a Cuxa cup. Um, so this is a carving specific hatchet. And the attributes of that are you gonna have a rounder uh, shape here in the blade so that you can curl things off, right? You're gonna have a very ridiculously sharp blade on this type of a hatchet. So I'm not gonna wanna treat this like a splitting maul, right? So we can transition from a carving hatchet, I don't really wanna split at all, to this hatchet, a forest hatchet, where I can do some splitting that's not exactly what it's made for, to an actual splitting maul, which is heavy, and its only real job is to blow stumps apart and turn it into firewood. And again, what you'll see in the differences are a very long skinny blade until it gets fat. A splitting maul is gonna have a little bit wider angled cutting edge and then a fat body in the back of it. For two reasons, one of them is that that gives it weight and the other reason is it immediately tries to split from the beginning so that it blows it apart. If you have, again, if you have too long of a face on it, it'll penetrate into the wood about this deep and then it gets stuck. The wood comes apart and then holds your hatchet. You can't really get it out. So obviously this is not a good splitter, but that's not what it was made for. One of the ways, one of the things that I really like about this hatchet specifically is I can use it like multiple different tools. So as I'm holding it right now, I can feather stick with this thing, right? So if I just take it like this, I can just push right there and make some really beautiful feather sticks with it. And that's easier for me to do than with this knife. This is a very sharp, high quality knife but it's lightweight and thin and it's easier with this hatchet because I kind of have an ulu type blade that I can push from here to here, however I want to do it, right? And just start rolling up little fine chunks of feather stick. So it's a great fire starter. Then I can choke down a little harder, right? Just a little lower. And now I've got more force and less control for chopping. Maybe I wanna make a flat edge on there. And then I can slow my, slide my hand down even further and I wanna process this quick, right? Maybe I wanna come up the end of this thing and then just clean it off and there's my flat surface. Maybe I was creating a bow drill, right? And then decide, okay, now I wanna go back to fine control mode and start making feather sticks with this thing again. Right? So the reason I really like this little hatchet is the versatility. The ability to have a fine carving tool that I could skin with, a fish head chopper or whatever, and then transition from light controlled force to heavier force 
to really hard force where I could actually chop this right in half just from the shifting of my hand. Handle length will give you velocity or give you impact ability. What I mean by that is I can swing, I, this is the shortest handle length, non-handle length. It's finite control, it's pushing, it's shaving, right? And then I slide down this little more added handle length. Now I've got some centrifugal force that's giving impact ability. This is a little more splitting, right? And I increase my handle length even more, and now I can start chopping one inch chunks of wood in half, right? But then it's limited because it stops there. But that's a good thing with this hatchet because it's easy to control. This is a fine tool control hatchet. Now if I step up to a larger hatchet, this one doesn't weigh that much more. You know, I can feel this one clearly weighs more, but not by that much. So if I want to carry this on the regular, this isn't going to kill me to throw in a backpack. But again, up tight, I can do the finite control, the shaving, the, the controlled stuff sliding down a little more. I have a pretty solid amount of control and force there. Sliding all the way to the bottom, I'm gonna have less control, but I've got a lot of thumping ability. I can really cut deep, so I can start to fell stuff with this. An actual felling ax is gonna be roughly this long, and I've got a lot of impact force that I can throw into the, the tree or whatever when I actually make my, my strikes. So, when it comes to handle length, if you need a lot of force, if you're gonna take big chunks of wood out and you're building a log cabin or felling trees or something, you need a long ax. If you're gonna do some around the campsite bushcraft related activities, I don't really think you wanna go much longer than this because here I kinda have the best of both worlds. I can do the finite control stuff but I can also fell some trees. Kind of sucks as a tree filler, it's not great. And it's decent as a bush crafter, but unlike this one, I'm not felling trees with this. I mean, I can, I'll be here all day long. Um, but I am gonna fell trees with this, just not as well. So a purpose-built tool for the purpose that you're using it is always best. When you wanna take all of the things that you can do and combine it into one tool, It'll do most all of those things, just not very well. Like this isn't the best fish skinning tool. This is right here, okay? This is not the best tree felling, uh, felling tool, clearly. This is a better tree felling tool. This is almost the best tree felling tool, but the absolute best tree felling tool is gonna be a felling ax, something really long that gives me a lot of impact. There's tons of hatchets and axes out there. Um, when it comes to selecting one of them, get something decent quality that's gonna last you for a long time. You'll be much happier. Get something sharp. I see all of these little Boy Scout hatchets that are like a club trying to bash through fibers. It really sucks to do that. Um, buy one nice one and you know be, be done with it. This uh, forest axe, is a great choice. This Keltoff Axe is awesome. It's an expensive choice, but I've had this for a few years now and it'll process and make anything I want super quick because of how sharp and how quality it is. So I'm very happy that I had it. If those are too expensive for you, that's fine. Step down to something that's not as expensive, but it's better for you to save up money and get something sharp and quality than it is to just buy something now so you have something that you're gonna regret and get rid of later to turn around and do what you should have done to begin with. So hopefully I gave you some uh, good information on ax selection, a basic understanding of the metal and why it's important to have a sharp ax and some of the basics of using the ax. The last thing I wanna throw out really quick before I end this video, if you're gonna use an ax that's this sharp, when you're cutting trees down, kneel down, because if I miss, this ax is going in the dirt, it's not going in me, okay? If I'm standing up and I miss, this ax is going right here in my leg, okay? A good sturdy ax swing to the leg right there and you're dead. You are gonna bleed out before you can get that fixed. So to protect your arms and legs, your knees, 
kneel down so that when you miss, it's gonna go in the dirt. All right, practice some solid act safety. Be careful what you're doing. And uh, hopefully that's valuable to you. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down below. And thank you for watching.